I was siege were over eight months. They know that the Galilee destroyed because they were part of it. They know that Jerusalem is destroyed and nothing is left. They saw the Jews in slavery down there for eight months trying to reach and how the Romans are beating them. They think they are the only one that left. They wanted to die for freedom. It's very hard to comprehend it. I can't believe that the Jews on top of Metzadah cremated the Jews. Or when the siege was not on, they took him down the mountain and buried them out of the place. But if they died where the siege was inside, they cremated. The Orthodox did not believe in it. So even in the Al Yadin book, you don't talk anything about cremation. But there are places here that later on we'll talk about it. Believe that it was cremation. Before the siege, they probably buried them out. Through the siege, probably cremated. Let's go on. For building, there's no marble around here. Usually, have a built with a lot of marble, or white marble, or red marble, or grey marble. The red marble came from Egypt. The grey marble came from Syria. The white marble came from Europe. <laughs> Can you imagine tens of thousands of rowboats and sailboats are bringing hundreds of thousands of tons of marble to this country? It will be too difficult to bring the marble up here. So this is where the quarries and all the buildings around here were built with the same stone that was quarried on that hill. Agriculture on the mountain, where we stood, where we sat, we looked around the hill, how could it be done? Look, if you have water. Over there, in that little shack, they're growing grapes. And experimentally, on the top of the mountain, here you can grow grapes. And over there, you can see the leaves of the grapes. Now look at that black stone that you see here. The hell, what is that black doing here? We saw that black stone on the Golan Height. We saw it in Tiberias. It has nothing to do on Mitzadah. It's not suitable around here. God forbid something happened to your home. What do you do? You take your jewelry, you take the most expensive, your most precious things, and you run away. The Jews had to run. They never knew where they're going to stop again. What they did, they took their tools, their daily life tools with them, put it on a mule or a donkey and ran away. That was a part of a flour mill, a private home flour mill stone from the Galilee, from the Golan. The Romans are conquering, the Jews are running away. So they carried it along with them to Jerusalem. From Jerusalem, they carried it along to Metzadah. There was a lower stone down here, a black stone. You put the grain in here, a stick in here, sit on your knees, and this is how you grain. This is how you had your own flower, home, mm. private home flower meal. And, and believe me, there are so many people are crossing around here, don't pay attention. That is daily life of the Jews 2,000 years ago. Farming, agriculture was up here. They stopped the agriculture when the seeds were to run. Why? The last year, the last year that the Jews were here was a drought. And if you don't spare your water, you never know what the next water season is going to bring or going to be. And therefore, they stopped the farming only when they were in siege. And that is a proof that farm. 2100 yeah. years ago. And how, how old is the temple, the, the uh, western wall? Their temple is also, the original was the Herod of Solomon, yeah. 2900 years. Then were destroyed and then reconstructed by the Hashemunai. Now we're looking at the food storage, an empty and clean one, after we excavated it. Something interesting. Look at those little stones, the round stones. They were parts of a big columns that held the roof. The roof was made out of straw and probably mud lime on it. So the sun will not hit it and yet it will be draft enough for air inside. The engineers didn't have a problem. They put the stone, marked it with the number. That is how Herod built the bath. All that court that we see out here was with the mosaic like that. Fresco is wet painting on wet stucco. It can hold longer because it goes deep into the uh, stucco. Underground, 
they were, we just they closed it now, there was an opening that water could be down here and water the floor. So everybody comes through where we came, over to a beautiful mosaic, covered with a roof. Over there in the corner, that was the locker room. And there in the corner, there was a little water pool that you took off your dust as you come in before you entered into the public bath or into the bath. All that was columns, you can see the pieces of stone that held the roof. Let's go inside to the flagellate. Those columns that you see on the floor were under the floor. That was the floor. When you see that little piece of dirt above, that was the floor. No, no historical story or evidence to it. Was this for men or men and women? I don't know. <laughs> Another one. Those were three. I said before that the Roman built six Roman camps around Metzada. We see three of them down there below. Now, look at that. That was not destroyed. That is left exactly as it is. And look from the air, you can see even the inside partition. Now you understand that if an airplane fly over Metzada and you take a picture, you see the same thing. Look, that, this is how it was abandoned and it was just fell in its place. Now, in front of it, you see like a line of stones. Yeah. That is the wall huh. of nine and a half feet high that Silva built all around Metzada. You see it all along the dirt path. From those camps all the way up to the north and all around. Yes, those are the original stones. Let's continue on to the past. Now, standing over the three shoulders that I showed you where we came to Metzada. Remember, I showed you like three big steps, three shoulders. That is the upper level of that shoulder, probably the residential area of Herod's palace was supposed to host him or the leaders. Even in the hottest summer, in June, July, August, when you stand out here, you do have a breath. It's the highest place on Metzada. Herod probably chose his engineers to be place to have the music. The control of Metzada was not done from here. The one who was controlling or commanding Metzada was in another palace, in another place. That was more the amusing or the residential or guest receiving around here. Rooms, we find even mosaics. We took it out because people started to pick up stone from the mosaic. But we find all those rooms with the mosaic floor. But that is in Gedi. The Jews that were here three years before the siege started to go even to in and bring supply of food. Come back and forth. Now you could not leave the place where the city started when Silva built the wall around Metzada. Down below we can see a Roman camp. Right in the corner, down below. And you can see very well, you can see even the guard, the place of the guard by the camp. See what happened to it if it's not destroyed, it's abandoned, just not in its place. From there we can see the wall coming in. And you see the pile of stones climbing up the hill to another Roman camp to your left. And another one, like two Roman camps on the hillside to your left. Down in front, the other two parts of the palace. The round balcony, probably this is where they had the tea or coffee in the afternoon. Believe is that that little uh, moat that you see was with water, and when the air drafted, it gave full air into that room. The lower room was probably the main room where we find over there also fresco painting on the wall like the one we saw in the back. So that point, we know that the palace was much larger, much wider. But it probably through the years, a big part of it destroyed and fell down. So that is the northern Herodian palace. How did the water reach to the top of that mountain? How Herod could make 
a half a million cubic meter of water reservoir.